For more analysis of what was said on the stand today, I want to welcome in attorney Jamie White. Welcome to BNC Live. Thanks for having me, Laverne. Appreciate it. Glad to have you. Tell us, what were the standout moments for you today? Well, it was another extraordinary day, Laverne. Um, you know, I think the thing that stands out to me and the thing that I was anticipating and hoping would actually happen, and I think it's the first time it's happened in the case of a white officer shooting a black man, is another white officer coming out to testify against that fellow officer. You know, we've seen in previous cases such as this where people have to bring in experts and people from outside the particular precinct that's being addressed. Here we have a Minneapolis supervisor, a supervisor of Mr. Chauvin that came out and in, in effect said what he did was wrong and not policy. And we know that the defense has a two-pronged strategy, it appears. One, that Mr. Chauvin was following policy. The other, that this, this excessive use of force, if it was that, was not the cause of death. So this was a big deal. The blue wall of silence got cracked today for the first time, in my to my knowledge, uh, and I've been doing this 25 years. That is an absolutely huge point that you make. I'm so glad that you started with that because I want to expand more on that. That is huge. Uh, what does it yeah. say to you? Do you think that he is concerned because he is Chauvin's supervisor? Uh, do you think that he is trying to avoid uh, getting in trouble himself, perhaps, uh, by saying this? You know, uh, because yeah. as you said, officers don't go against other officers. You know, it's funny you say that. I was thinking that as I watched him testify, is this genuine or is this accountability and he can't get away from it? Um, I don't know that it matters to some level because I think what we've seen in the past, we can go back to Rodney King and, you know, all the way forward, consistent with what you guys did at the bottom of the last hour and go to Baltimore, right? I mean, you had the mayor of the city, an African-American woman who was demanding um, cooperation from the, from the police department and was stonewalled in the Freddie Gray uh, matter. So, you know, we've seen this over and over and over again. So for whatever his motivations were, you know, for the first time, again, to my knowledge, um, we have a officer from the department that he participates in coming out and basically saying what he did was wrong and inappropriate and laying a foundation for a conviction. So um, it, it was an extraordinary moment. You know, they said it was gonna happen. I, I didn't believe them at first, or I was, I guess I was pessimistic, but uh, today it happened. Skeptical. So I think this is a good, yeah, good day going forward. And so yeah, I guess Laverne, the only other- Do you think the defense other, was prepared oh, for that? I do. I, I think they were. I think they knew that. I, I, you know, I think they were probably preparing for the other three officers in this to cooperate at some point in time. Um, it's just that kind of trial. And to your point, whatever the motivations were of Sergeant Poigel today, he, you know, he had really no choice. I mean, to side with Chauvin at this point in time, if you're not a paid expert, is political suicide. Do you think that maybe that they decided, and when I say they, meaning the powers that be in the police force, that they just knew that they couldn't fight what was going on, this worldwide protest over George Floyd's death. And so they said, you know what, we're just going to throw Chauvin to the wolves so that we can, you know, save all of ourselves from uh, further scrutiny. I do think there is an element of that. I think that, you know, I mean, this is a case, look, I mean, we all know, we've all seen the video and we, we know the evidence. Now we've heard the testimony and we've heard, um, you know, the, the cooperation that this was not an appropriate technique. So there was no saving this man, even if you wanted to. He had worked with this man since 2008, right? I mean, there's something to be said for that, regardless of being a police officer or not. I saw pain in his face to some degree. I don't feel that he necessarily was uncomfortable telling the truth, but it didn't appear to me that he enjoyed doing what he was doing at certain points in time. Um, so I think that between the the city of Minneapolis and the state of Minnesota um, and the attorney general of, of Minnesota, you know, taking this so seriously, so immediately, these officers had absolutely no choice but to participate in these proceedings. And with the video evidence, um, anything short of an honest participation would have landed them in a courtroom as well, not in the side that they wanted to be on. Yeah, absolutely.
Absolutely. We're out of time, but thank you so much for that analysis. We appreciate you joining us here on BNC Prime. Good to see you, Laverne. Thank you. You too.